Day by day our lives are turning Like a potter's wheel they spin You are choosing your own maker Choose your potter's wheel, my friend This point in our series is probably a good time to make a few suggestions, offer some tips, and point out some helpful tools. You may be familiar with some of the first items that I point out, but there are a few things that may help you later on in this video, so I hope you'll hang in there. Let's begin with some suggestions. The first is kind of obvious, but pray. Bible study is not simply an academic exercise. It is a life-changing habit that we develop to get closer to God. If we aren't talking to God, then why are we studying His Word? I'll have more to say about prayer as this series goes forward. Secondly, the faster you can get around in your Bible, the better. If, if it takes you a while to get to a passage, you may forget why you were going there when you arrive. Some students like to put tabs on their Bibles to mark the beginnings of Bible books. That can be a, a great way to get started. I don't recommend that as a permanent solution, but it is a great way to start off. Well, the best course is to memorize the books of the Bible in order, and the fastest way to do that with songs. Several can be found by searching the internet, and you don't have to do them in front of anyone. Do it in, in your car while you're on your way to work while no one's listening. But you can find a lot of them on the internet, so I'll just make that your homework assignment. A good alternative for some is to get a Bible version as an app for their cell phone or their, their tablet. These will usually let you run word searches as well in the text. Next, I need to make sure we understand that abbreviations are oftentimes used for the full names of Bible books. For example, Genesis is abbreviated G-E-N, Exodus is E-X or, or E-X-O, which brings me to the fact that a number of years ago, a three-letter system was devised. Well, in these videos, I usually spell the books out on the screen. In rare cases where the space may be tight, uh, I might abbreviate, but I'll be intuitive about it. Now, I encourage students to write in their Bibles. Not just anything, but truly useful information about texts or connections that are helpful between verses. Be careful what you use to write in your Bible, though. Pencils fade and the lead smears over time. Pens can bleed through the paper. You need to use pens that don't bleed and are, they're usually listed as good for archiving. There are usually some blank pages at the back of your Bible. These are fillers in the binding process, but they also serve as a good place for notes. The corners make a good testing area for your pens. Keep a notebook handy. This is reading time, and when you come to a passage that you have a question about, you don't want to stop and start studying it. You need to write it down and keep reading. This is reading time, and you need to set aside other times for your study. And then you can go over those questions that you wrote down. I like to think of reading as a time of filling the mind with fuel. Study time is when we use that fuel to dig more deeply into the Word. If you're reading and not studying, or studying and not reading, you aren't getting the most out of your time in God's Word. Bible software has become an incredibly powerful tool. If you're just getting started, I don't recommend going out and spending a lot of money on it. It's not a, a magic bullet. At this point, you're best served by reading to fill your mind with what's in Scripture. There is free Bible software out there that provides good search features and some handy research tools at times. As you develop and mature, find a Bible dictionary or two. You might even do that by buying a Bible program that includes them. Always remember that your English dictionary does not necessarily give you the correct definitions of Bible words. You see, dictionaries are designed to tell you how our current society uses a word. And our current society doesn't always use words the way the Bible uses them. One last point. Reading what someone else says about the Bible isn't purely Bible study. For example... These are five-minute Bible studies. 
but they are what I'm saying about the Bible. To get technical, for you to study the Bible, you actually have to pick it up and study it. That's why these really only need to be five minutes long, because you need more time to study it yourself. Many people pick up books in the Christian bookstore. They read them, and they think they studied the Bible. Technically, they studied what someone else said about the Bible. I'm not saying that's wrong. We just need to keep it in perspective and make sure that we are actually studying the Bible with some of our time. Well, I hope these have been of some help to you, and I also hope that you will keep searching the Scriptures.